لكن تحديت الظروف وخذتها وحدي صبورا مستعينا بالصلاة كم مرة عصف الأنين بداخلي كم مرة قد ذاك قلبي من أساء محرمتها وكم كرهت مصابها بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Regular uploads والله الحمد ومنا and it's very important that I remain active on the channel. سبحان الله العظيم. Now this video is very very disturbing and we are consistently in a back and forth with our pseudo Salafi. Uh, slash Madkhali opponents to a certain extent and at the day they are you know genuine brothers from the Salafi um, spectrum and it's only these pseudo you know Madakhila types uh, and even the closet takfiris from amongst them that need addressing and as I consistently say it's my academic right to record videos to enlighten and educate the man. I'm even struggling to fathom how this popular speaker could make such a comparison and the reality is the cognitive dissonance is so apparent that it makes you cringe to even hear such rubbish and not address the matter head on. So when I play the video, you'd understand who it is and to me, it just shows that they have ran with the narrative for so long and it's coming back to bite them in the backside where they try to hide the true reality of the forefather of Daesh. Now, just to add, as far as community guidelines are concerned, YouTube, um, we uh, condemn uh, extremism and this is important that we tackle this head on because I don't want them to say that, you know, breach community guidelines. And it's vitally important. This is for academic educational purposes only. Have watched the video. Okay, just to make it clear, you bro, reminded me of a point, mashallah. Because when you say companion is serious, there is no companion that ever fell into innovation. Remember that and memorize that. None of the Sahabas fell into any of the deviated groups. Remember that, okay? Well, any of the Sahabas ever did bid'ah. Are we all together, brothers? That's why we were told to follow the companions. So remember that. But the brother wasn't asking about the companions of the Prophet. I just got, agit I got worried that someone might misunderstand it. If you have a friend that is in these groups, my advice would be to stay away from them. That's my opinion, personally. You do not want to be influenced in having a bad view. Would you be with somebody who supports ISIS? Exactly. So what's the difference between being friends with a person who's Ash'ari? No difference. Hear that? He said, would you be with someone who supports Daesh? I don't want to say, you know, the abbreviated letters, or the community guidelines and all that. And I think they replied in the affirmative. And he said, exactly. So what's the difference between, what's the difference in having a friend who's an Ash'ari? No difference. No difference. Would you be with somebody who supports ISIS? Exactly. So what's the difference between being friends with a person who's Ash'ari? No difference. So, according to Abdurrahman Hassan, having a friend who's an Ash'ari and having a companion or having a friend who supports Daesh, there's no difference between the two. Now, how has he come to this twisted, diabolical reasoning? Let me issue some home truths to this brother. And I think Brother Hijab mentions, right, he's critical thinking, he's done all day, he's like a regurgitating parrot. And I've done videos regarding these distortions and whatnot, and, you know, you could click the link and you could watch it. The harsh truth is that Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab is the spiritual forefather of Daesh. Spiritual forefather. He is the one that Daesh seek inspiration from, and his bandits. To stress that the pseudo-Salafi foundations are built upon straws. They're built upon straws. You can literally go through all of the points that 
confirm their contradictions. It's just baffling how he could come with such rhetoric. Now, I'm going to educate him about Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab now to show him that no, the Ash'ari or the Asha'ira have no sort of chain or spiritual connection to the forefather of Daesh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, whereas it is you and it's the Salafis who have a connection to uh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, who in turn is the spiritual forefather, the roots to Daesh. As you can see on screen, we've got Tariq al-Naj by Ibn Ghannam. And he mentions that in this year, okay, the people of uh, Mahmal requested from uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab and the Amir Muhammad bin Saud uh, to enter into Islam, the Khulaf al Islam, and to make a treaty on the sort of um, observing Tawheed. And they accepted it from them on a, a condition. And what is their condition? That they need to give nisf, half of their crops. Zara. To give half of their crop. This is the harsh truth of the Rahman Hassan. That you're trying to sanitize and wash away the crimes of your spiritual forefather, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, who was the pioneer of groups like Ikhwan and Daesh and all these mutatarrifin, okay, you know, connected to the Najdi uh, Da'wah. Whereas with yourself and your likes, you're following a diluted bastard version. That's the harsh reality. And as I said before, and I consistently say, if he was around today, he would oppose you and even put you and your likes to the sword because of his takfiri rhetoric. Okay? Now, what happened was when they realized that, you know what, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab's image uh, and his life and actions is a problem for us, they started to water down, okay, their da'wah. So as you can see on screen, okay, we've got a passage which is like a revised edition of Tariq al-Najd. What did they do? They started taking passages out. So here's a passage. It says, in this year, they requested the people of Mahmal from Sheikh Muhammad bin, uh, from Sheikh Muhammad bin Saud to enter into Islam. And the main part where it says, um, that it was accepted from them under a condition to enter into Islam that they gave half of their produce, okay, uh, etc. So, Coming back to me now, what you and your likes are trying to do in the English language, trying to sort of sanitize it and trying to make it look nice and clean. So you're following a watered down version. Like I said before, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, he will be leading Dawaish and their likes. But I don't understand how is it possible you can idolize a man that really would oppose you and be at the forefront of opposing you in ways that could be uh, detrimental uh, in terms of their methodology of looting and pillaging and whatnot and we've done it already in Takfiri Tendencies Part 3 I'll put the, uh, the, the card up there you can watch it. Scholars emphasized that Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab Takfiri was politically motivated to propel the interest of Muhammad bin Saud. Let's be frank he, he got used and he used him as well because if you know the life and actions he was getting passed around he was you know living in different different provinces and finally found a base and Muhammad bin Abdul Saud was all ears went and I've done it in Takfiri Tendencies Part 3. So the book Nawaqadul Islam if you read it and contextualize it, it, from 1156 all the way to 1206, or 1157 to 1206 when he died, for 40 plus years he was pillaging, killing, slaughtering, looting, taking ghanaim and whatnot. Now, the third nullifier, which they try to hide from you, if you read how the students of Muhammad bin Abdul have understood it, it was not regarding the uh, kafir asli, or the kuffar asli, meaning like the Yehud, and Nasara, wal mushrikeen, wal mulhideen and whatnot. It was to do with those Arabian tribes in around the area that he pillaged. If they did not make takfir of the Ottoman Empire, they were kafir. Okay, so how do we know this? Let's go back to uh, Ad-Durar al-Sanniyya. Ad-Durar al-Sanniyya, this is written by Abdurrahman bin Muhammad bin Qasim. Okay, or oh, not written, but he compiled it. So he mentions uh, the statement, and again, it's possible Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab wrote this, or his uh, students, but once again, the manhaj was the same because the forefather was Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, his son Abdullah, Hassan and whatnot. So he mentions, uh, المشركين, that whoever does not make takfir of the mushrikeen, from what? Min from the Turkish state, meaning the Ottomans. Uh, and the grave worshippers, 
from the, like the people of Mecca and other than them, and other than them, bloody hell, everyone was worshiping great, uh, from those who worship the righteous, and they've uh, left Tawheed uh, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for shirk, and they've changed the uh, messenger or this exchange the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fahuwa kafirun, he is a kafir, mithlahum, he is a kafir like them. Even if he dislikes their religion and hates them, and it's imperative, on, uh, imperative uh, that whoever loves Islam and it's and, and the Muslimin uh, to make uh, and does not make takfir on the Mushrikeen um, has <laughs> look at this has basically uh, rejected the Quran doesn't believe in the Quran uh, because the Quran had made takfir on the Mushrikeen and ordered their takfir and their en um, enmity and fighting them now look that's the uh, statement by. Uh, either Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, more than likely he is, but just say if he's not, it's from his students, but the, the sort of teachings, uh, like I said before, who understood the teachings the best of the Salaf. The, you know, the Tabi'un understood the teachings of the, uh, the Sahaba Radhanu, who in turn uh, was taught by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he mentions Qala Shaykh, and he now is explaining how they come to this conclusion. As I said, it could be Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, more than likely he is. Qala uh, Shaykh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, Rahimahullah. Uh, في نواقض الإسلام إن نواقض الإسلام الثالث the third nullifier من لم يكفر المشركين whoever does not make takfir on the mushrik so you see whoever does not make takfir on the Turkey state who are they referring to the Arabian tribes or the Arabian provinces around Al Arid and Najd أو شك في كفرهم and has doubt in their kufr or uh, corrects their madhab kufr وقال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية من دعا علي ابن أبي طالب فقد كفر وَمَنْ شَكَّ فِي كُفْرِهِ فَقَدْ كَفَرْ And he mentions that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said whoever calls upon Ali radiallahu anhu has committed kufr and whoever doubts his kufr has committed kufr. We've already proved that this statement was incorrect. Like this wasn't uh, stated by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah but that's, I'll, I'll obviously, I've done that in another video. Whoever wants to know about the proof can come to me. Then he mentions, listen to this, and the third issue is that uh, it's imperative to do jihad etc. The ones who aid the mushrikeen. Now, who is he referring to? The ones who aid the Mushrikeen, meaning the Arabian tribes, uh, and give them support or aid against the Muslims, meaning they were the only Muslims on the planet, right? Uh, with hand, listen, with hand, or with tongue, or with the heart. What happens? Or with their wealth, what happens? This is kufr, mukhrijum uh, islam that you leave Islam. <laughs> Even with heart, you leave Islam, okay? Uh, and whoever aids the Mushrikeen against the Muslims, and extends to the mushrikeen in terms of wealth and aids them uh, and wages war upon the Muslims, you know, ikhtiyaran minhu faqad kafar. And he is committed kafar. Now look, now the eight nullifier. So all of this is relation to the Arabian tribes. This is Abdurrahman Hassan. This is the man you should be condemning. You're trying to compare the Sha'ara uh, and uh, the Wa'ij. What the hell is wrong with you? This is the biggest catastrophe and disaster uh, in the English speaking world that this book was translated. الثامنو. Number eight, ظاهرة المشركين to have support or give support to the mushriks uh, and aiding them against the Muslims is obviously a nullifier. And then he calls the verse in Surah Al Maida. So coming back to me now. So this is the man who, in essence, is your spiritual forefather. It's nothing to do with Ashara and having a friend who's Ashari and what's the difference between them and, and the Wa'ish. Are, are, you, are, you, are you literally stupid? Are you lacking? in serious critical thinking. Let's show you more proof that Muhammad Ibn Wahab is the spiritual forefather of you and your likes. Not the Sha'ira. And if anything, you're following a watered down version. You're not even following Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, but yet you idolize him. Crazy. So this is now, he mentioned, that as for the statement of the questioner, right? Okay? That they uh, profess, meaning the Arabian tribes, and claim that they're the subjects of the Turks, meaning that they are under the Turks. And the Turks of the past, meaning the Ottoman Empire, Dawlus al meaning from the past. And they've not entered under the rule of Ibn Saud. They're not entered into the rule of Ibn Saud. And his obedience, obviously, by obeying him. Except that they have usurped, etc. And this is the greatest evidence of what? What is the greatest evidence of? Of their ridda and their kufr. So if you <laughs> are not under the rule of Ibn Saud, you're kafir. Okay, you're kafir and this is apostasy. Uh, this is what Shaykh al-Bani said. He goes, as for the Wahhabiya, uh, what have I got to do with it? And I criticize it, sometimes even more than others. And then he ends up by saying, وَرُبَّمَ الْحَاضِرُونَ يَعْلَمُونَ ذَلِكَ He says, and as for those who are present, know this. Shaykh al-Albani critiqued uh, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. Isn't it shocking that 
a popular speaker can say that there is no difference, okay, in having a friend who is an Ash'ari and having a friend that supports Daesh. And because of community guidelines and whatnot, I don't want to say, you know, the abbreviated letters. Are you out of touch, okay, with reality? It's clear that the spiritual forefather of the Salafis, the founding father of these neo Najdis, okay, who follow a bastard diluted version, but I'm saying when you hear such rhetoric, it just shows the cognitive dissonance of this uh, movement. And at the end of the day, pseudo Salafis need to wake up. Your spiritual forefather would despise you, would hate you, and even go as far as leading uh, these groups like Daesh and whatnot. Like, why are you living in denial? So, once again, the statement that having a friend who is an Ash'ari, there is no difference in having a friend who is a supporter or wants to be with Daesh, according to his own statement. Ludicrous. And once again, then you say, why do I call this out? If you're saying to me that this is acceptable and he doesn't need to be called out for this, then you're closet takfiris as well. That's what you are deep down. Not all of you, but... The ones that try to conceal it, try to idolize a man that, you know, was the spiritual root and forefather and laid the grassroots to what we see today, this takfirism that we see today, this problem that we see today, or what we experience today. So this video is just short. Take care of yourselves. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ليس الغريب غريب الشام واليمن إن الغريب غريب الأحد والكفن إن الغريب له حق لغربته على المقيم في الأوطان والسكن سفر بعيد وزاد لا يبلغني وقوتي ضعفت والموت يطلبني ما أحلم الله عني حيث أمهلني وقد تماديت في ذنب ويسترني تمر ساعات